Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to another Vietnam vlog live edition number five. Jeez, man, I just think I've done five of these things already. I guess I'm doing them at a far more frequent pace than I was back when I was actually here doing a lot of work. And it's just a thing. What you see, weekly thing is now something we seem to do every time I'm in a different location. Uh, as we see, we finally got our pointy hat. That's a bit of fun. Uh, so that's a bit of crack. We got our pointy hat from the Mekong Mekong River Road Trip. It's nice, actually. It's painted very well. This lovely boat is one of the huts. And uh, what's over here? Vietnam, actually. Why not? So it's been a bit of a kind of, I suppose, hit or miss Saigon. There's a lot of things that have not really. It's not really the city I remember from 2020. Although that's a lot of a lot of people have also said, "Oh yeah, by the way, Saigon's been that this isn't here, this isn't here, this is different name, things like that." But on the other hand, the Mekong's better than I remember anyway. It's, it's definitely a lot of fun being from that. But anyway, we'll start start off anyway. Flew into Saigon, uh, not too bad. The first day was pretty much just get here, sleep. Then check out the Bentan Market and Soul Kitchen, which I think I still have. Yes, I do. The Soul Restaurant and the Lower and the Bentan Market. Always worth a look. Uh, restaurant and bar. Spoiler, I did get a beer with fruit juice in it. Uh, it's one of those Saigonese specialties, which I just can't find anywhere else in Vietnam. So it's a beer bottle that's been turned upside down into either a mojito or a load of fruit juice. And it turns out to be very good indeed. Uh, but obviously I've kind of skipped out on the drink the last two days as a result of that. I think tomorrow is Saturday, so I'm going to have to get one more drink in before I take the medicine again. Uh, but it's lovely. The, ben the soul bar is just as good as I remember it. The only thing that was that the Bentan Street, the kind of Bentan market, it's not as exciting as it used to be. I think they're just waiting on more tourists to come in before they open it up a bit more. But the entire market was just closed. It just felt very underwhelming. Or at least the, in, the inside probably is open. But I mean, it closed at a certain hour. And then, well, well the street food market got turned into all sorts of mad thing that Vietnamese people probably get a kick out of the, all these burlesque shows but um, I remember that street food market it was one of those defining things that I had to do every time I was in Saigon especially if I flew from Hanoi and it's where I had my birthday lunch as well so it's something I think of fondly it's unfortunate that that's gone and more unfortunate was when we went to the 30th of September or is it 23rd of September anyway that park near Boi Vien Street and I went underground to see if that market was still there, and it's not either. That's a shame that both of the international food markets are closed in District 1. So now it's just like regular restaurants that you have to go to instead of going into the street food and just saying, ah, yeah, I'll just go with whatever I feel like. Yeah, but that's all right. Nam Silk isn't around. Uh, Giant Ibis wasn't around, which surprised me because it's a bus company. I thought it would transport Vietnamese people around just as much as foreigners. Uh, Sin Tourist, I think, has moved location. And the Vietnam Backpackers Hostel is no more. And that was not really that much of a shock since Hanoi's one is also closed. But it's lost Hanoi. It's lost Saigon. Quay is still there. Hoi An is still there. So, I mean, there's that. But I don't know how it's going to rebuild if... The ones in the center are their base. I feel like it needed one or both of the big Vietnamese cities to have a stronghold in, and then it could add more of their uh, franchise. I guess not. That's a shame because I have a wristband. I was really tempted to go to the rooftop if that was there, but alas, not to be. I'm all on that. It has been pissing rain the past three days. Real rainy season here. Now, today it rained quite a bit, but it wasn't as bad as it was yesterday, where I went to the Independence Palace, 
lovely thing, lovely thing to do. It was nice to finally get to see the Independence Palace, because it's one of those things that you're always passing on the grab bike, the, the palace, because I mean, I'm always going to Notre Dame, I'm always going to the post office, because that's my thing. When I'm in Saigon, all I want to do is post letters, because Hanoi, the letters never arrive, but in Saigon, they do. But the Reunification Palace, it's one of those things, you're always passing it, but you never actually go to it. So I said, you know what, let's do it this time. And it was great. It was it's not too shabby. I mean, it's good that we that it's there. I still think it's better in the French. The original French palace looked marvelous when you look at it like this. This really is something special. And when the re, when the renovation was done, it looked a bit more like well, that's the French one again. It's not a bad one at all. But the palace now looks like this, and it still stands today, but it's very much, you could tell that the building hasn't been, uh, let's say, in use <laughs> since 1975. The architecture is very much out of, um, what's your man? Maurice, not Maurice Binder, Ken Adams. It's a bit like a Ken Adam Bond set. You have this weird the border meeting, the windows are lovely, the art style is very interesting. It's very much of its time of the 70s and the 60s, unlike say the French one, which probably still would have been classy today. Yeah, the Nordum's Palace, but at least it got some up. I mean, who was who were they to know what was gonna happen in the next 30 years, like in the next 20 years? In Vietnam's history. But now, oh well, the palace was nice, the bunker was interesting, it had plenty of rooms. So, I mean, if that was up in Hanoi, I think they'd be really jealous, but it's down here instead. Like, Hanoi doesn't really do much in the way of, you know, it gets the French. Um, there is the French presidential palace in Hanoi, and that's the yellow one. That's really nice, but yeah, Ho Chi Minh preferred Little Stilt House. Free Vietnamese. So yeah, first day I was in there, going up to the rooftop and chilling out. Yeah, the Cochin Hotel. It's actually not too bad. Uh, it's I've warmed up to it a bit. Like initially, I was a bit kind of hit or miss on it, mainly because of the noise pollution. I can hear it screaming and things from windows, and uh, it's just you know easy. And the kids were. Jeez, the kids. It felt like I was just living bef beside a school. And I probably am, but I'm just not aware of it. And so there's that. Then, of course, you've got the twin bed situation. I prefer a double bed, but the twin bed will do. And shower is a bit, uh, shower is all right, but you know what? It's nice. They've actually gone out of their way to help me out. Like they helped me book the Mekong River trip today. A very short notice, which was very good of them. And yeah, getting the laundry done, getting all this wet clothes out of me, that's not too bad. So Saigon, it's not quite Saigon Yabu just yet. I think I need to go to Tao Dien to fully see my opinion on it. But I mean, it's still there. I need to go to the tour, I need to go to the souvenir shop as well, I get a lot of stuff. <laughs> I've been buying souvenirs up to the up to the neck. I mean obviously we got this. It was unavoidable that I was gonna get one of these pointy hats. But um the likes of this for example. Oh it's in a plastic bag. But it's coconut candy. And what's this flavour? Oh this is the original the coconut candy. And then there's a peanut version underneath. Uh, just something I got when I was on the Mekong River. I just couldn't help but buy them. They're 30k each. And then there's honey in there as well. So there's a lot of, a lot of snacks. I'm going to have to buy another suitcase. Because <laughs> that thing is only 16 kilos. And it, you can feel it. Like it's just not big enough. It's almost there. But I need to get another bag. Maybe a duffel bag. Or maybe... A suitcase or something, just something to buy all of these souvenirs I want. It's really like <laughs> I really miss Vietnam. 
and seeing all these lovely arts, all these lovely statues and trinkets and collectibles. I want to bring a lot of that back and make it feel like my own. I mean, a lot of the people in Saigon especially were like, oh no, get your job, get a job, you'll be good, you'll be good. And maybe I will be if it's like 40 million or 45 million down, but my old job was 35 million. I mean, I guess I could go to Apollo and tell them the International House Connection, but like, that's not a bad idea. But at the same time, it's, it's Ireland. I've got to get meds as well. Like, There's no way around that. I have to get the medication. I'm not even sure. If, and apparently it's doing wonders, but I mean, I'm just thinking, is it not just the climate that's doing that? There's only one way to find out, and that will be when I get back to Vincent's. So it's not been bad. So the Mekong River trip, absolutely, it was better than I remember, because the last time I was there, uh, there was floating markets, lots of uh, coconuts, bananas, pineapple, mango, all that kind of thing uh, on the boat. It would be that. But this time... Uh, because of the rain, I think. I spent two hours getting into the Mekong. <sighs> oh my goodness, I need to stop doing that. But um, it's, at least it's Friday. At least the awning is probably going to stop soon. Also, we got this. The best drink ever. Revive is fantastic. It's one of those drinks that I just miss. I mean, they say the Picari Sweat is basically the same, but... I don't know. Anytime I have a revive, it just lifts me up. It's a nice uh, drink to bring. Although only in a fridge, it's not great when it's out in the heat for a while. It just feels like tasty acid. But yeah, the Mekong left very late at 11. Uh, fair play for the tour guide. She, she was like, I'm the only one here. So it's a very personal tour where it just talked about. I think she was an, she was an English teacher where she was a tour guide in the pandemic and she became an English teacher and she kept going, oh, my English, not great. I was like, your English is fine. So there's a lot of that, uh, a lot of like, oh yeah, the Irish accents and everything, but for whatever reason, I'm very neutral. That's because of the students that I teach in Dublin. But it all came to it. We went to the Mekong, then bought the hat, then went on the boat across to uh, the first stop, which was just kind of tasting the fruit. Oh, my God. Irish fruit needs serious catching up, or at least Irish fruit sucks. <laughs> I mean, I love raspberries. I love strawberries, blackberries, blueberries. Berries are excellent. But, my God, you miss the pineapple, the mango, uh, jackfruit, dragon fruit, uh, star fruit as well. That was something that came up and a guava, and all sorts of things like that. Oh, so lovely. And then they started playing the music, and I'm like, you don't need to play music, it's just me. <laughs> but they did anyway. So I gave them 70k just to satisfy them. The music is so Vietnamese. It's the sort of music that I'd play when I'm making Vietnamese food in Ireland. And then there it is, just some... Ding, 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 ding. Ah, oh, it's very funny. And then after that, absolute starts booking a grain and it's just sitting, sitting around waiting for the rain to clear. Thankfully it did, because yesterday it didn't. I just ended up going on this this next boat into these narrow, they call it a canal, even though I would have called it a river, but in the canal with the palm trees hanging over you like a roof. We have the lunch there, I think it's a river fish, it's fried rice with seafood. I think it's calamari was in there. Um, chicken soup, which was, it was unremarkable, but the, it's all right to have that. Um, the rice was amazing. <laughs> the noodles were amazing in the soup. I was given watermelon dessert. That was an excellent way to finish. Uh, fried chicken, which was interesting. But the star of the show was a river fish that they had 
deep fried, like they just caught it, they gutted the fish, then they deep fried whole, serve it on the two sticks, and then they give you lettuce, rice paper, and fish sauce. And your basic idea is get get the rice paper, roll it up in the water, then the lettuce, then some fish, and you roll it up, and then you dip it. Oh, so good. Like ri- river fish is so different to Ireland's where it's basically just salmon or cod, you know, salmon cods, um, ray sometimes. But this is a very tasty river fish. And it's just nice to have it while the river's there, like the little streams going past. It was perfect. Well, I mean, almost perfect. I mean, there was behind me, there was a table with um, English people and American people, and they were talking about Ukraine, China, Russia, abortion, gun control, um, and in that really annoying accent where it f- feels like they didn't know what they were talking about, even though they probably did, but I mean, they didn't know what currency Cambodia uses, so. It's so confusing in Cambodia. <laughs> That's very silly. Yeah, but they just reminded me of the sort of uh, interns that were in Hanoi and just went into Vietnam without a clue. Like, they didn't have a clue what, was, what the capital even was. They didn't know anything about the food or the language or anything. They just went in and expected things to turn their way. Like, basically, it's, it's English rules in Vietnam, but that's not how it works here. You have to bend yourself around to Vietnam's way of life or else you won't get very far. Uh, let's hope they change a little bit. But after all that, uh, see the alligators. That was a, it was so weird seeing the crocodiles and alligators. They're just in that farm, just like. Rah, rah, rah. Apparently, they're not. They're no longer in the wilds in Vietnam. Uh, they definitely are in Cambodia, but it's unfortunate that they're not in Vietnam. I guess similar to the elephants, where they're more of a symbol than anything else. Uh, but yeah, their crocodiles are there. And then I see the snake, I was terrified that they'd bring the thing out. Mm-hmm. Uh, fortunately not, they just kind of did their thing. They let me alone. Then I get in the boat and it's just a single person going down the Mekong. It was really quiet, so peaceful. It was lovely. Um, probably ruined because I live streamed it onto Instagram, but I, I hadn't had many photos taken of me at that point, so I was like, you know what, let's do an Instagram for that. Very relaxing thing to do. And it was a real defining Southern Vietnam experience. Makes you remember that for all the madness Saigon is, it is easy to get to the quiet parts. Hanoi feels like a city where it's really difficult to escape, unless you go to Hanoi by airport. But Saigon... You can do that. You can go to Kanto and Mito. You can go to Kondo. You can go to Phu Quoc. You can go to Moine. You can even go to Dalat and Yatrang and, and Chow Doc, even though Chow Doc isn't. I feel bad. I feel like I gave Chow Doc a lot of stick, but it probably has. it probably is better than I remember it. Chow Doc was the only city in Vietnam that... I found a bit un well not bin is unremarkable, but Chow Doc is the one where it's like at least it gave off a sense that there was something there. Like even if it's the border town with Cambodia, you're still like interested that, that this sort of place exists. But yeah, it was fun. And then of course finally, uh, after all that, got the river thing, uh, coconut candy, that was excellent. I had a bit of that. And then I just chill out, go back on the boat, then go onto the big boat, watch the sun go down over the Canto Bridge. Phenomenal bridge, by the way. I know there was tragedy associated with it, but it's amazing. And that's what I did last time. I remember last time driving over that bridge and uh, getting back to Saigon. But this time it was more uh, just getting the boats. <laughs> it was all the better for it, taking the boats. You're in the Mekong. If you don't take a boat, then why are you even in the Mekong? Like, that's how it is. And then, um, apart from a traffic jam on the way back, it was perfect. It was nice to get back. 
Although I haven't eaten much. I've only had like a bag of Doritos since coming back. But mm, a river fish feast is going to fill you up for the day. So, so t- tomorrow, I'll probably be in Taudien tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'm going to the Coochie Tunnels today or not. I'd like to, but I feel like it's probably better to do it on the next, the following day. Uh, my laundry is being done at a glacial pace, but hopefully it'll be done by tomorrow. Because I do want to go to, I'd say go to the deck. The deck, um, the the rooftop bar in Saigon, I'm trying to remember, in Tadiem, I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. I'll probably go to the Thai restaurant or Cigar, one of those two. I'd like to go to Couple Star, but eh. I think it would have been better if I lived there, but I don't live there anymore, so I'm going to Segar instead. Um, yeah, well, let's see what the story is. We'll see if um, Tedian is, it's probably drastically different to what I remember it being, because again, it's a pandemic. Uh, Teho wasn't that different, but I feel like Tedian is because of the sheer number of expats in Saigon, and then how many of them live in Taitian as well. So they could be all gone for all I know, or they could be all resetting, like it's a great reset, they're going to build things up from the ground up. Time will tell, we'll find out. And the only way to find out is tomorrow. Uh, So until next time, I think that's a good way to finish up, to wrap up. But uh, thanks for chilling out from the Cochin Hotel. And thanks for listening, whoever you are. And until next time, so long for now.